Hello dear students in last lecture we have discussed about classification of animals up to phylum echinodermata now we are going to discuss about next part that is phylum chordata i told you a trick to remember this all phylum of kingdom animalia with the help of one trick that is perk chocolate pair ke niche aate aate more sar ki entry pe vanish ho gaye so if you remember i told you about this different phylum as perk porifera chocolate cylentrata pear platyhelminthes ke niche nematoda ate annelida ate arthropoda more sir molluska entry echinodermata pe vanish ho gayi vertebrata so all these are the phylum included in kingdom animalia you can remember it with the help of the trick for chocolate pair ke niche aate aate more sar ki entry pe vanish ho gayi okay so now next we are going to see about vertebrata we have to see the classification of vertebrata in little detail in our book this vertebrata can be classified now what is meant by vertebrata who is having vertebral column who is having backbone they are called as a vertebrata in short they are chordates in short they all are chordates so all these chordates are classified into two basic sub phylum they are protochordata and vertebrata vertebrata actually is a sub phylum it is chordata first then chordata are divided into protochordata and vertebrata now in chordata let us see some characteristics of protochordata examples of protochordata are balanoglossus hadmania amphioxus these are the examples all these are the marine animals maximum the characteristics of protochordata are they are term as lower chordates they are having backbone but in early stages throughout life their backbone is not present vertebral column is not present protochord is not present that's why they kept in the protochordata so they are term as lower chordates they do not possess brain cranium vertebral column jaw and paired appendages they doesn't possess brain cranium that is skull vertebral column that is backbone jaw and paired appendages notochord is present at least in some stages along with other diagnostic chordates characteristics other diagnostic characteristics of chordates are dorsal hollow nerve cord gill uh, gill slits are present post and tail then as usual other characteristics on the basis of which we have classified earlier organisms are they are triploblastic three layers bilaterally symmetrical they can be divided into two halves enterocoelomic coelom cavity is present organ system level organization is present means different organs specific organs are developed up to this these are marine animals protochordata are further divided into two groups eurochordata and cephalochordata we are not going to go in detail about this uh, sub groups of protochordata here you can see the characteristics of protochordata here in 
early stage there is a development of notochord so this notochord is developed here okay this is the primary characteristic amphioglossus as i told you is a example for this next group is vertebrata after protochordata there is a vertebrata in vertebrata there are different examples now this vertebrata basically classified on the basis of some different characteristics whether they are having jaw or they develop jaws or not uh, and some other characteristics are used for classifying this vertebrata in that notochord is present or not dorsal nerve cord is present or not pair gill pouches are there or not <coughs> triploblastic whether they are not not coelomic cavity is present or not on the basis of this vertebrata are classified now vertebrata are classified in our book are up to five classes only they are pieces amphibians reptilia aves and mammalia that is mammals but in some books if you go in 11 standard when you will go and if you opt for biology at that time there are sub phylums seven sub phylums or uh, seven classes of sub phylum vertebrata they are agnatha condyokitis osteoceles amphibians reptilia aves and mammals so early stage fishes are divided into three classes then amphibian onwards it is as it is but fishes can be divided into three sub classes they are cyclostomata condyptes osteoceles and then further amphibians reptilia aves and mammals are as it is but according to our book as per our syllabus we are going to discuss about these classes different classes first of all let us discuss about class pieces so this class pieces the characteristics of these animals are they are aquatic basically here once again vertebrata vertebrata are classified on the basis of water to land advanced characteristics how they are developed accordingly they are classified so this pieces are classified no oh, sorry these pieces are aquatic animals first of all they are jawless and possess circular mouth in some cases notochord is present in the form of cylindrical cord then the reproduction by laying eggs they are oviparous animals produces eggs which hatch inside the mother body so these are oviparous animals fertilization sometimes it is internal then heart is two chambered fertilization mostly external lay eggs and then fertilization takes place they live both in fresh and sea water in size they vary from 10 mm to 4 m for example labio hippocampus sea horse anabas climbing perch these are the examples now let us go towards next class that is class amphibia these amphibians are living both in water as well as, as well as on land in kingdom plantae we have seen bryophytes which require water as well as land for their reproduction likely in kingdom that time we have seen that bryophytes are the amphibians of kingdom plantae now this is class amphibia in class amphibia these animals are living in water as well as on land that's why they are called as amphibian 
found in water and moist places. The skin is smooth and rough, rich in glands which keep it moist. Skin with pigmented cells that is chromatophores. So this pigmented skin, pigmented cells, chromatophores help for breathing sometime. Body is without scales. Endoskeleton is mostly bony. Notochord does not persist in adults. Initial stages, notochord is present, but in adults it is absent. Head and, and trunk are distinct. Head and rest of the body is differentiated. Neck and tail may or may not be present. Okay, in case of some animals, neck is not present. In some, it is present. It depends. Then brain is not much developed. Cranial nerves are 10 pairs. Sexes are separate. That is, they are dioecious, male without copulatory organ. Fertilization is external as they lay eggs you know frog and toads they lay eggs outside that is in the water and then afterwards fertilization takes place examples are frog toad salamander okay mud puppy these are the examples to discuss then next is class reptilia Class Reptilia Examples are Lizard Chameleon Flying Lizard Snake Crocodile Turtle If you see All these animals are serpentine animals Okay So these are serpentine animals And living at terrestrial habitat Reptier means to creep creeping vertebrates you can call it these are first truly terrestrial animals living in warmer region characteristics of these animals are body is divisible into head neck and trunk tail is well developed in some while it is reduced in others two pairs of limbs are present but in snakes limbs are reduced or Sometimes it is absent. Body is covered with epidermal horny scales. Scales are present. Epidermal means upper layer of the skin. Their skin is dry, impermeable, will not allow anything to pass, and divide of glands. Glands are not present on the skin. Respiration here takes place by lungs only. Yields are absent. Heart is incompletely four chambered. It is neither three chambered nor four chambered. Incompletely four chambered, having two auricle and incomplete divided ventricle in crocodile. Heart is completely in crocodile. Heart is completely four chambered. It is exception. Their sexes are separate. Fertilization is internal. This is the characteristics of land animals mating will take place and fusion of gametes will take place inside the body the embryo always lies in a fluid filled sac called amnion <coughs> there is no larval stage in development larva means before formation of adult there is a larva stage this larva stage is absent in this examples are tortoise then turtle flying lizard chameleon wall lizard cobra that is snakes these are the example to discuss now next class is pieces as far as pieces are concerned these are the animals which are covered with soft feathers so try to understand most of the time we get confused 
while classifying we say birds only are the aves but it is not like feather reptiles or when the body is covered with feathers then they are called as aves in coming class we are going to see about bat bat also flies but it comes under mammalia mammalians mammalia once again deliberately i am pronouncing it as mammalia so that you can remember the spelling the birds are described as feather reptiles that have developed the power of flight the body is covered with soft feathers the body is divided into head neck trunk and tail there are two pairs of limbs the four limbs are modified to form wings in case of flying birds wings are present but if it is not then reduced to small size hind limbs are strongly developed for perching walking their endoskeleton is light as they are flying their bones are hollow and having air cavities this makes the bird light jaws are modified from a strong beak teeth are absent in aves respiration is by lungs only lungs have additional bag like membranous extensions called ascii sacs heart is completely four chambered hence four four chambered means rept, uh, reptilia partially four chambered it was but aves and mammalia are having four chambered heart sexes are separate means male bird and female bird such type of distinction you can make here birds are oviparous that is they lay eggs fertilization is internal means fusion of gametes will take place inside the body high degree of parental care is exhibited in case of aves till reptilia parental care was not there here aves and mammalia are giving parental care to their young ones there is no larval stage in development examples are sparrow penguin eagle pigeon peacock crow ostrich these are some examples and many more you can find it out next class of discussion is mammalia the pronunciation is mammalia the mammalians exhibit here they representing animals are bear camel bat dolphin human beings are also there kangaroo these all are examples of mammalia their characteristics let us see this is the most evolved group of organism and are found in diverse habitat ranging from desert polar ice caves ocean mountains forest and grasslands they are named mammals as all of they possess mammary glands milk producing glands mammals are the only animals which feed their young ones with milk the characteristics of mammalia further are skin is covered with an exoskeleton of hair hair are provided with sweat glands which help in the regulation of body temperature in aquatic mammals hair being negligible the subcutaneous layer of fats provides insulation mammals have two pairs of pentadictyl limbs pentadictyl means five fingers their body cavity is unequally divided into two parts by a muscular portion called a diaphragm eyes are provided with movable lids ears have fresh fleshy external ears or pinni teeth are embedded in sockets thecodonts we call it as 
two sets of teeth develop in the lifetime of mammals milk teeth and permanent teeth that's why they are called as a diphodonts teeth are of different types that's why they are called as heterodonts respiration occurs by lungs heart is four chambered rbcs that is red blood corpuscles are non nucleated and usually circular the sexes mammal sexes are separate gonads are paired testis lies commonly in the scrotal sacs outside the abdomen fertilization is internal eggs are small microscopic without shell and are retained in uterus of female for development they give birth to living young ones and are called viviparous the young ones are fed on milk from mammary glands so these mammalia are having some three main important groups leg uh, egg laying mammals they are called as a monotremes marsupial mammals pouch mammals and third one is placental mammals true mammals these are true mammals so in detail you will see we will discuss it in 11 standard once again so humans are true mammals placental mammals okay monkey human dolphin whale giraffe tiger lion bat these are true mammals kangaroo is pouch mammal they are having pouch on the abdomen of mother they feed on the mother milk their young ones that is marsupial mammals and egg laying mammals examples are duck billed platypus spiny anteater so they lay hard shelled eggs that's they are oviparous so here we have finished our chapter we have already discussed about nomenclature and uh, rules of nomenclature in video lecture part first of diversity in living organisms so though it is appeared in last section of the chapter that part is already discussed so we are not going to discuss it again what are the rules and regulations for nomenclature and how to nomenclate that all we have discussed so here we have finished our chapter now henceforth i will conduct some test for you on this chapter and uh, you have to write this exercise after this first of all we will discuss about in text question and exercises of this chapter and then we will conduct some test so i will understand your understanding level of this chapter i will come to know then second part we have so far completed three chapters first was fundamental unit of life second was tissue and this is third diversity in living organisms so this three chapters are for first semester so here we have finished actually logically first term syllabus now let us see for how long it will go for this exercises and in text questions otherwise in next week we'll discuss about next chapter okay so till the time you keep on studying next period will be of in text questions and exercises um, be prepared from the pps of the given material for your test there will be multiple choice type of question test uh, we are going to discuss and uh, that will be easy for you for cracking the competitive examination see dear students whatever question, uh, notes i have given to you this is foundation course type of material all this 
for your neat examination whatever questions are asked all these questions are asked on this syllabus for neat you need to study biology from 9 standard to 12 standard 9th and 10th standard are the basics so based on this only questions are asked so be prepared for this dpps it will help you a lot in neat examination these all questions are designed on in that line so let us see you in next period next video lecture discussing about in text question and exercises thank you thank you very much good day